Hello everybody, welcome back. If you've been with the channel for any length of time, you know I've been getting the van geared up for traveling. And uh, I've run into a, a couple stumbling blocks, but there's one thing I want to show you that's just really been plug and play that's made life a little easier with getting this thing ready. I just got a new 12 volt cooler. Some of you may have seen it and uh, a glimpse at it in previous videos. But let me show you this thing. So here is this cooler from a company called Set Point, or I'm sorry, Set Power. Set Power, and this model is the RV45S. And you know, it's kind of big, but that's a good thing actually, because I've been moving from the RV. Uh, you know, I'm used to a bigger um, RV refrigerator, and I thought, you know, a cooler, I don't know if I can do that, but I mean, it actually holds a lot of stuff. And look at that it has a nice wait hang on let me let me do something here let me let me this thing gonna work i was gonna make it darker in here so you can better see this nice light that's even in here so uh yeah i have some goodies in here and this actually lights it up you know if it was darker this actually lights it up very nice in here oh wait reese's thing who put those in here uh but you know i have a bunch of stuff in it a bunch of drinking water and some breakfast stuff and Oh, I don't know what. Some Sunny D's down there. And a two liter soda. Sody pop. Some leftover stuff. Some barbecue pork. And sp yeah, spaghetti and meatballs. Peach cups. Lunch meat stuff. Lunch meat and cheese stuff. And, uh, you know, I got a bunch of stuff in here already. And, uh, and it's been working really, really, really good. It is a refrigerator freezer. You know, it's not just a cooler. It does have the uh, compressor in there and the controls and it, um, you know, it just has an initial glance. I mean, right off the bat, I notice, you know, the quality in it. You know, it's not something that's just all plastic and, you know, it has metal latches on it and, you know how many coolers do you see that have you know plastic latches and handles and they break after a while but you know this is really nicely built and it just seems really thought out and you know and you can tell it's not a cheap product and a lot of things that have gaps in them are uh you know it's real tight at one end and loose and sloppy on the other and i mean all the way around this is just everything's just really nicely fit you know and the panels are all you know, there's access panels, I guess, if it had to be serviced at some point, but there's, everything's put together with screws, and, you know, it just seems like a really nice, heavy-duty, uh, just a really well-built model. And my initial reaction was, you know, it arrived undamaged, it was well, well-packaged, it didn't look, it looked like it was bouncing around in the back of a truck or thrown around in a warehouse or anything, uh, it showed up, not a scratch on it, the, um, took it out it's just uh just perfect look good uh, you know good first impression on it and another thing was the manual that comes with it you can actually read it without a magnifying glass <laughs> i hate you ever get stuff with a manual that you know you gotta squint or i mean this print is so small look at this see nice big print easy to read uh everything from maintenance to cleaning uh, how, you know how to operate and everything uh it's it just well it's just a good manual that comes with it i have bought products that good luck with the manual uh, so so far i mean it gets a pretty good score for me now to me there's a couple ways you could use a cooler is you know the first thing that comes to mind is you know a typical cooler that you know you gotta get it ready dump a bag of ice on it and you know, what happens after a little while, the ice starts melting, everything inside, swimming around in water, you know, a lot of things. That's fine for drinks, but if you have food in there, you know, lunch meat, cheese, the, I don't know. When that stuff gets wet, it gets pretty, you know, never seals up real good and it just gets nasty. So it's nice that it is actually a refrigerator uh, and a freezer. So it can be used as either. And yeah, I have it set at 41 degrees right now. No, well, it it's actually at 41 degrees right now. And let me adjust this camera a little bit here. How's that? Hang on. Yeah, this will be better. So 
it's set at for where do I have it set? Yeah, right at 41. So and that'll blink for a minute uh, and then go back to its the inside temperature. But this can be used as a freezer. I mean, we'll get it to kick on here, okay? Let's turn it down to like 16 degrees. It'll kick on here, I'm sure. How about five degrees? And it runs pretty quiet. Come on, kick on. There we go. So, now in the manual, or on the website, on the Set Power website, it rates this at a 55 watt uh, unit. That it, uh, but I've only been able to get out, out of it. You know, right now it's pulling 34. That's the most I've ever seen out of it. And I have it set on, I even have the compressor set on the max. But for some reason, it only pulls 34 watts of power. And it doesn't run that long. Let me, we don't need to, we don't need to freeze anything in there. Um, but it will, you can set it down there and use it as a freezer. But let's pop it back up here to 41. How about 43 so it shuts off? But that's okay, we'll let that, we'll let it run. Oh, it did shut off that quick. So even maintaining that temperature, I mean, it just kicks on once in a while. It only uses the 30, you know, roughly 30, mid 30s. I've seen it pull 30 to 35 watts. So, and only for, you know, a few minutes at a time throughout the day, it just seems to use so little power. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. When I got it, I initially just unboxed it and set it in, um, set it on, you know, about 40 degrees. And I, I didn't put anything in it. I just plugged it in, turned it on, and it really got cool really quick. It got down, you know, I think it was like 74 at the time inside when I first turned it on. And I set it, you know, to around 40. And it only took 10 or 15 minutes, and it was cooled that quickly and shut off. Like, that, that's pretty impressive. I, I don't know that, you know, brand new residential refrigerator would cool that quickly. Um, and it also comes with a two year warranty. You know, speaking of residential refrigerators, the last one I bought, I bought a new uh, major brand. I think it was a Sears Kenmore or something or um, residential refrigerator. They only had a one year warranty. And that's a major name brand. So this comes with a two year warranty. So um, thumbs up on the, in the warranty department, right? Back to using it, uh, you know, typically with a cooler, yeah, get it ready and put ice in it and it melts and gets all yucky. So, if you know, to use this like a, say a weekend or, or just a day trip even, uh, you know, you could get this ready the night before. Maybe he's going to a picnic or a family reunion or something. Yeah, you could load it all up. Um, oh, yeah, let me show you something about these baskets in here. You could take it into, you know, into your house, and maybe you had stuff in your refrigerator that you wanted to load up. Instead of taking the whole thing in or carrying all that stuff out, you, know, you can just take these baskets um, inside, get them loaded up, and, and bring them in and stick them in and be done. So that's pretty convenient. Or if you wanted to, say, you kept your lunch stuff in here, okay? Um you know, for making sandwiches and stuff. You know, you can take that out, you know, close the lid, you know, go about your business and have your leftover barbecued pork or, you know, sandwich, whatever. Instead of being in and out, in and out of it. And then, you know, then go put your lunch stuff away. So I think those baskets are pretty, uh, pretty cool. So what else? Oh, back to say you was getting ready for like a day trip, just a big picnic or something. You could get it ready the day you know the night before or whatever with most of your stuff your drinks and uh whatever else you want in there and you can plug it in there's an adapter here yeah i should back up and mention that yeah it's a 12 volt uh cooler but it has this adapter where you know if you got it ready the night before uh you can just plug it in you know in your house or garage and then plug this 12 volt uh you know the 12 volt plug into this adapter so you can have this cooled the night before, you know, then the day of the picnic, load it up and, and go, and then you can just plug this into your uh, your car 
you know, the power port in your car and keep it cool on the way. Now, if you're going to be using it for longer periods of time, like, you know, for the weekend or maybe you're going out on a long excursion or, or such, or you travel for longer periods of time like I do, I don't like to use, um, I mean, maybe other than a cell phone or something, I don't like using the car's uh, charging port for anything that draws, you know, uh, power over time. So that's why I got the, the battery bank. I just don't want it to ever take a chance of draining my car battery and being stuck somewhere and uh, having to get a jump or something. So for longer periods, I've it's what I do, and I'd recommend getting a, a, a power supply. A uh, Whether you have house batteries, uh, like in an RV or a van, or if you build in a built-in solar thing and it had a battery bank and an inverter and all, all that kind of stuff, you could you know, just plug it into that or one of these portable ones, but... Yeah, I wouldn't use that for long, long term. Although if you did, it does have this um, this battery protection. So I have it on low right now because I'm not worried. I have plenty of power here uh, that you can set it on. Uh, you can put it on high for a higher level of protection. So it will automatically cut off, you know, if your battery uh, in your car or truck SUV gets too low. Um, that way you don't get stranded with a dead battery. So it has the power protection, and also you could probably put it on minimum too, the compressor speed. And I have run it on that, and it maintains it just, just fine. I think the the maximum setting is for if you just want the, you know, cool down quickly. That once it is cool, uh, you could probably just put it on minimum, and it would maintain it just fine. So I'll tell you something else about the power consumption is now this portable solar. Uh, unit here is a thousand watt hours and I have left this on for uh, six days <laughs> this when I back to when I first got it okay I know I'm all over the place with this video uh, I just plugged it in and left it run and I'd forgot about it I didn't really forget about it I just I was so impressed that after the first day, it was still, you know, I went from 100% to, I forget what it was the first night, but it, um, after the first day, but it was so minimal. I thought, I'm just, I'm going to go a second night, maybe a third night. I'm going to see how long this thing will actually run. Now, keep in mind, it was empty, uh, and they do run more efficient when they're full and everything's cooled down to temperature, but it was empty. But keep in mind, too, I wasn't in and out of it all the time either, you know however many times a day i just left it shot just left it run kind of exercising it and um it ran for six days and it was only down to 16 percent so i i probably could have gone a seventh day now nobody uses them like that you know you're in and out of them obviously so um you know another test was i had run this down because i was using it for some other other jobs you know the laptop and uh, recharging some other batteries that the other day I charged this back up to 55% and, and that was it because I was out of time I had to go somewhere so I unplugged it but I charged it up to 55% now this is on the third day okay and it's only down to 21% so if that gives you any feel for um, how little power this actually uses now, keep in mind, it is a 1,000-watt-hour, you know, portable battery thing. And it's lithium, so. Uh, it's, so, there's that. Okay, what else? I wanted to show you something else in here. Okay. There's a, yeah, description. Oh, here, this. This can actually be used for tilted up to a 30-degree angle. So, it's not like an RV refrigerator that... You know, you have to keep relatively level. Uh, or a residential refrigerator. Any refrigerator that I've heard of, for that matter. Uh, but this can be used, you know, if you pulled up to some odd spot at a picnic location or some outdoor event. And, the, you know, the ground was not perfectly level. That's okay. Um, up to 30%. Or 30 degrees. Now, that's pretty extreme. I mean, nobody's... He's going to use it at that much of an angle, right? <laughs> but it allows up to that. It is designed to be used up to a 30 degree angle. 
That's crazy. And it also says to make sure you don't block the, the air vent so it can cool its, itself properly. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it tells more about the battery monitor, you know, the battery protection mode and, you know, powering it, powering it on and such. So, you know, it's a real well put together manual too. Real straightforward, easy to read, energy saving tips, you know, maintenance and cleaning. So, yeah, it's a really, I think it's a really, really well thought out unit and very efficient. Yeah, it cools very well and doesn't use that much power. The other thing about the RV refridge, and I, you know, I've been happy with propane. You know, the fridge is the RV refridge. It's only a couple of years old. I, it is, it'll run off 110 house power. You know, if you're plugged into shore power, or or it will run on propane. And I've been very happy with the uh, rel reliability and efficiency of propane mode. I just always leave it in propane. And I thought. You know that's the way to go i thought these coolers and um and the other style the uh, like dorm type refrigerators that run off 110 i thought they uh, i just thought they were real power hogs you know i was happy with the propane i thought in my van do i want to get a small they do have the small upright uh, propane models i thought do i want to try to install that in the van because that's kind of what i've become used to and um i just enjoyed the reliability of it the other bonus for this for me is right now the van thing the van build has kind of stalled out a little bit i've been doing a couple of things but the kitchen unit part of it i i've just got busy with uh some other projects which will i'll get into soon that i, I really needed to get to and the, the the van's been kind of on the side a little bit but what makes this here so nice is it eliminates me having to take on yet another project like installing the the portable or the the upright propane and those the wiring and the propane lines and all that messing around the last thing i need right now is another project this cooler was put it in here plug it in turn it on and it just made life uh a lot easier for me like i have enough stuff to do already so you know i love the plug and play uh part of it I love you know the size of it. Uh, I love the construction of it. Um, I love the efficiency of it. There's I just can't, I have no negatives. I have no negatives I can think of for this. I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> so, in case you can't tell, I should also mention that if you go to the set power set power right yeah, if you go to the set power website you know there's a whole line of. Um, refrigerator freezer coolers you know various sizes based on you know someone's particular needs and i think these are on sale right now i'll put a link in the uh down in the description uh to this and um some other models that are running um specials and and that sort of thing so go check that out i think that's all i have on the the cooler right now i'll tell you real quick the one of the projects that kind of took up my time was uh if you've been with the channel for a little while too you know i bought that maverick that old 1971 it'll be in june it'll be 50 it'll be a 50 year old car that now runs so that's taken that was an important it's kind of like a thorn in my side it's over in my son's garage he has a one car garage it takes up a fair amount of space over there it was important to me to put some things to the side because i didn't i just didn't like it being non-operational at least if it's a running car if he wants to move it out of, move it out of the car or if he wants to go for a little ride in it it's a cool little car um at least it's movable you can turn the key and uh you can move it and um instead of just being dead weight just taking up garage space just sitting there taking up room nothing really happening with it so i, I wanted to get it in operate uh in operation so that was important for me to reach that point now i can kind of get back on the van by the way, if I made two videos that I put over on my other channel, if you want to know more about the the Maverick, and I stopped up, we did take the van out on a little um, maiden voyage. I went up to my cousin's house and uh, we checked out his 1965 Ford Falcon. So that was the most recent one. The one before that is the Maverick, 
video. Uh, if you want to know more about those old classic cars, especially my Maverick, go to my other channel. It's called Dave's Other Stuff. So just search for that on YouTube and you'll find my chat that up my other channel. And if you're interested in seeing those videos. So anyway, um, that's it. That's all I got today. Uh, I hope I covered everything on this. Okay. Um, that's it for now. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.